Good morning. Do you ever just sit and think about how much God loves you? The Bible says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And in Ephesian, Paul prays for the Ephesian church saying, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let's take time this morning to think about how much God loves us as we sing, think about his love. Would you stand with me as we sing? Think, think about his love, think about his goodness, think about his grace that's brought us. the blue words and you sing the white from the ends of the earth from the, of the, earth, from the depths of the sea from the depths of the sea from the heights of the heavens Sovereign of all creation. 
you pray with me? Lord, thank you so much for the depth of your love for us. You created us, and we are yours. You are light and love. Help us to share your love with others around us and to be a light to shine in our world that sometimes seems very dark. Thank you, Lord, for our time of worship today and for the privilege it is for us to be here to worship you freely. Be with us, shine through us, and show us your love anew today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. I want to invite our children to come down to the front for the children's sermon at this time. While they're doing that, if you'll take a moment to greet one another and then return right back to your seats and sing with us, we have a story to tell. worship this morning, and if you are visiting with us, we're delighted you're here, and we hope to get better acquainted with you. The only request we have is that you would take the fly leaf from the bulletin and fill it out and put it in the offering plate as it goes by, so we get a chance to get better acquainted with you. This month of missions, we have been asking all month, who is my neighbor? Are you my neighbor? Yesterday... Uh, I don't know how many of our neighbors came to eat pancakes, but I know that Lisa put out 850 plates and they were all gone. So it was by far. It was, I think, without a doubt, our biggest. We've never had to. We've never had to come back and raid the church kitchen for plates before. We always had what we needed. So it was a marvelous success, and for all of you who came and worked and came and participated, thank you. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. We do that in partnership with the uh, City of Middletown and with the um, Middletown Chamber of Commerce. It's a great big group effort, and it was a wonderful day. Now, one of the best things about yesterday is looking out at that room and there were all kinds of characters. About half of them, I didn't know what they were. You know, these 
kids wearing these costumes. But I want to tell you, the room was, in the celebration hall, was in one snapshot a picture of the world. And when you're asking the question, are you my neighbor, yesterday was a resounding, you are my neighbor. I think in the light of the horrible tragedies of this week and weekend, it, it, it's, it's hard to imagine. And our friends at First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town, our uh, love goes out to them this morning. They're just a few miles from here. And the story could have been very different. Um, had they had the opportunity to show the hospitality to their neighbors, they always do, it would have been uh, a very different story. And so I think on this last day of our missions emphasis, we need to answer this question, are you my neighbor? And I think as a church, and I, I'm not even going to say for you, I'm going to say for me, that today we come to answer this question to say whether you are black or white or any shade in between, whether you grew up in the city or you grew up in the country, whether you're gay or straight, whether you're a Jew, a Muslim, a Hindu, a Christian, Catholic or Protestant, whether you're a born American or whether you're here illegally, whether you suffer from physical illness or mental illness, whoever you are, you are my neighbor. And I think today we stand as a church to say the world is our neighbors. We're delighted to welcome a guest preacher this morning, and I'm not going to introduce Mike and Brenda, but I just did. Um, <laughs> because Bobby is going to come and introduce them in a few minutes. But we're delighted you're here on the last Sunday of our month of mission. Our missions offering stands at just about $2,000. We're way below our goal. So today, you can use one of the mission envelopes in the, in the pew or any envelope or right on the check missions offering. And that money will go according to our um, dispersal uh, disbursement plan to the five different mission projects that we're supporting this year. I hope that you will give generously to that fund. One other piece of our missions is that after the service today, we are going to go outside and stand around the new blessings box. The blessings box is uh, something that's come across the country, and it's a very simple concept. Take whatever you need and leave whatever you can. I learned yesterday that our new Middletown police force and the city of Middletown have adopted the box to try to keep it full. So they are partnering with us, and so today at the end of the service, we want to go out together and just dedicate that box to the glory of God to feed the hungry in our community. So I hope you'll plan to stay and join us outside right after that. We do have two mission videos today. I said that last week, but I lied. Today we do have two mission videos, and we're going to see a little bit more about our neighbors in Macedonia and in Haiti. When I was still a teen, I had like a dream of having such place. I think the Lord called me to actually do this. For the past five years, I'm working in the United Kingdom, so I'm actually able to save a lot and when I come invest in the house. So each month I could calculate, for example, I would need 5,000 euros for the window, so I would calculate how many days I have to work to get that money. I would go to England, work, come back for the windows. When we met Natalia, she was starting to build the children's home. Her desire was that they would know that God was with them. She desires to show them love 
to have a safe place where they can have their needs met, but even more to know um, Christ's love for them. I do have this great desire to work with children, especially children who are not loved, who are abandoned, who desperately need someone to take care of and someone they can trust. I always thought that living an ordinary life, just going to a normal work, it is a bit boring if you're not doing it for the Lord. And if the Lord is calling us into ministry, we should surrender to that. Thanks to partnerships with CBF churches, Natalia has been able to speed up the work of the home. They provided for the kitchen, they provided for the yellow color. It's actually CBF who paid for it. Jeff and Alicia brought a team from Abounding Hope Initiative. So they offered to help me with painting the rooms of, of the children. For me to have all those means, it would, be, it would take long, long years still for me to work and come back and invest. If I hadn't partnered with CBF, I think it would take another three years to open this place. Jesus loves children, widows and orphans, and he did take great care of them while he was on this earth, and that is what I want to do, follow in his footsteps and take care of children. Good morning, boys and girls. That was pretty neat, wasn't it? How she's going to open a children's home. Well, this month, as, as Brother Jim said, has been our missions month. And every week we've tried to talk about different missions and about things that our church does to help and about who is our neighbor. Okay? The scripture that's going to be read later is from Deuteronomy. And there was one verse that I wanted to bring to your attention. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God, who is not partial, which means he doesn't care who you are. He loves everybody the same. He is not partial. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widows and loves the foreigner and the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Now, my thought was this. If our God, who is this great and powerful and mighty God, is concerned about the fatherless and about the widow and about the stranger or the foreigner, then shouldn't we be too? Because it was something that was important enough for him to say, I execute justice for these people. Thank you, dear. So, as we also talked about today, there are different things that our church does to help our neighbors and to be helpful in different missions that we have. And today, after the service, we're going to go out to above between the playground and the street, and that is where the, the, the blessings box is. It's really pretty neat. And we're going to, I bought some things for us to put in it. But I want to encourage you that when, how many of you go to the grocery store with your mom? Okay. When you go with the grocery store with your mom or your dad, remind them to pick up a couple extra things. Things like macaroni and cheese. Well, it's not, sometimes these people aren't homeless people. These are people who live in houses or apartments. They just don't have enough money to have food or enough food, okay? So some of the things that you could buy, you could buy things that they could eat without having to be able to cook it, like pinto beans. I've been told you can just open the can and eat them right out, and it works. <laughs> Never been particularly fond of doing that, but if you're hungry enough, yes, sir, you can do that. So you can buy things like beans, which are a good source of protein for people. You can buy things like macaroni and cheese, which is a good filler food. You can just buy pasta and tomato sauce to make spaghetti kind of stuff. You n please be sure and remember to buy meat. Like, this is salmon, you can buy tuna fish or whatever, but canned meat, because people do need protein, even though beans can work for that. Also, to do things like vegetables, that sort of thing. So, remind your mom and dad just to pick up a couple of things. They don't have to buy a whole bag of groceries, just two or three things. And then either Wednesday night or Sunday when you come to church, you bring those things, and you and mom walk out to the box walk with an adult, though, okay, because it's kind of kind of crazy out there sometimes with the traffic, walk out there and just put those items in the box. And then you'll be doing your part to help. 
And sometimes, if your mom's like me, I have the best intentions of buying something extra at the grocery store, I just forget to do it, just like I forget to buy the milk that I needed and that sort of thing. So just remember that you can be helpful and you can help with helping our neighbor. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Y'all have already been out there this morning. Well, maybe in it. The other thing is if there's not any room out there for stuff, you can bring it into the church, and we'll have a place here in the church that we can store the extra food. All righty. Well, then we'll do some more about putting some things in there this afternoon after church, okay? All right, so let's pray now, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity to help the children understand how to give to other people, how to meet the needs of other people, and that, in also that you're helping us remember that we are responsible. We are charged to help those who are in need, Father. Lord, help us bless this, this endeavor that we are doing. Let it be something that we end up building two or three more to put around the town. Father, that we are meeting the needs of our community, Father. Lord, be with the service and be with these boys and girls every day as they go to school. Bless them. Let them be a light to the world around them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I have a few uh, ministry highlights uh, that are coming up that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the youth ministry is sponsoring a Halloween party tonight from 6 to 8.30 with snacks and games. Uh, it'll be here at the church, and costumes are optional. Uh, there's still time to invite your friends. Uh, also, you may have noticed that in the flyleaf of your bulletin, uh, there is no Wednesday night uh, supper this week. Um, that's because it's Halloween, so... Love on those kids that come to your doors and uh, uh, go out and celebrate with your kids. Uh, next Sunday from 5 to 6.30, uh, Jay Close will be leading an introduction to a workshop called Mindful Meditation. The workshop will help us learn how to be more present in the moment. Uh, a four-week series is planned for early next year also. Uh, your reservation is required for this next Sunday, though, so please call the church office by this Thursday, November 1st, to reserve your space. Uh, there are other announcements in your bulletin, uh, as well as a fly leaf for prayer request as needed. We'll continue our worship now as Leslie comes to lead us in a hymn. The hymn text to O Zion Haste was written 150 years ago, and it's been used by Baptists all these years to challenge today's church to be a missionary church. Um, a church that is not a missionary church is a self-centered church, and I believe will not receive the blessing of God. We at First Baptist are really seeking to be a missionary church that God can use to share the love of Jesus Christ all around the world. Let's stand together as we sing, O Zion, Haste.
going to invite our deacons to now come to receive this morning's offering. I love that hymn. It's a great reminder to us that God has put us here to be a light to the world. And we send our young people and we send our old people and we send our money around the world. Deacon Ray Walters is coming to ask God's blessing on this morning's offering. We pray. Gracious Father, as we as thou hast hastily given us all things, we now freely give unto you ourselves and the substance of our hands. Accept these gifts as a token of sincere worship in thee. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Thank you. It's great to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? And to, to feel that sweet Holy Spirit. Well, this morning I have the opportunity to share just a couple of concerns of our church family with you. Um, Miss Shirley Hood, as many of you know, 
had been in the hospital for knee surgery. Uh, she had uh, moved on uh, from that and was in rehab, uh, but just uh, last Friday was having some difficult issues and was sent back to the hospital. So I know she and uh, the family would certainly want us to keep them in our prayers, so we will lift her up uh, for sure. I know it's flu bug season, and uh, uh, Miss Lindsay said that Jeanette was home with a flu bug, and then we may have others out that just aren't feeling well today. Uh, but as far as hospital concerns, uh, we think that that is all that's in the hospital currently. We still have several that are recovering at home, and we want to keep them in our prayers. Um, and there is a list behind us uh, near the church office if you want to take a look at that. We're excited to say that we have another new baby in the church. I know, it's amazing. Amanda and Brian uh, Sigmund have baby Jacob now, and so they're home and doing well, and that is just always the best of news. And also, Margaret Perry is very excited these days. She has been told no more dialysis, and so we want to rejoice with her today and uh, continue to lift her up in her prayers that that remains the case and that she will not have to deal with that anymore. So if you have things on your heart this morning, please uh, lift your hand and let us know so that as we look around, we know that many of us have concerns on our hearts, uh, many things happening in our neighborhood this week, certainly that we want to keep in our prayers as well as uh, around our nation. So let's go before our great God and ask him to, uh, to be with us. <clears throat> our Father, we come this morning and we just stand in amazement here in your presence. Father, we're so thankful to be able to be together and to worship you in truth and in spirit. Father, we recognize your goodness, and we give you thanks for your blessings. Father, in all things, you are our tower of strength. Father, today we rejoice because you have given us this day, and Father, because of the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Lord, we realize that in our own sinfulness, we have failed. Father, and in this moment, we confess our failures and our sins. And Father, we ask that you would forgive us and that you restore us to a right relationship with you. Father, we come this morning lifting up our brothers and sisters. Father, for those that we know and for those who we have no idea of what their needs are. Lord, we share our concerns and our hurts. We come with heartaches and with sadness. Father, you've heard all of these things spoken, but, Father, many more that are in our hearts and on our minds. Father, there are so many things in our world that we don't understand, so many things that we can't fathom how or why it could even happen. But, Lord, we're grateful that you're always there and you're our tower of refuge and our strength in joys and in sadness. Father, what a blessing to know that great is your faithfulness. Father, help us to be patient and confident in you as we wait for you. Father, may we serve and minister to others around us even as we deal with our own needs. Lord, we love you, and we praise you this morning. And as we continue to grow in our own likeness of you, and as a church body, we pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. It is certainly good to see everyone here this morning. Um, and it's with great joy, um, before I read our scripture this morning that 
you know, I get to introduce you to my, my friends here, uh, Michael and Brenda Tinker, and I am certainly glad, Brenda, that you are with us this morning. Um, I, I've heard, I, I told her earlier, I had heard a lot of good things about her, but we had not been able to meet up until today, so it is great to be able to connect with you this morning. Um, so as many of you all know, I have been, since last year, been working with Baptist Seminary of Kentucky, um, going over to Simmons College um, a few nights a week to open up classes. And so Michael and I met through the seminary. Um, he is currently a student with Baptist Seminary of Kentucky. Um, and the conversations that we had um, during that, that time, I, I, I will tell you, they've been a blessing to me. And so I, I have appreciated the time that's been spent getting to know you. But, um, and so I, I, I'm hoping this morning that you all will sense that same spirit that I, I sensed in him from day one. But just to let you know a little bit about Michael, he, he is originally from Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, but actually ended up growing up in Chicago, Illinois, um, where he ended up in middle school, high school. Um, and of course, Brenda as well, comes from Chicago, Illinois. Um, and and <laughs> that's right. Um, and then Michael served 22 years in the U.S. Army um, and is retired from that now, but is working with the U.S. Army Cadet Command at Fort Knox. Um, but he is also serving as an associate pastor at St. Stephen's Baptist Church. So no doubt he is very busy. Um, and then continuing to go to school with the seminary. Um, but he graduated from, um, let me make sure I get this right. Um, and I, I I lost it on here, I apologize. St. Leo University, um, and, and now is completing an MDiv. Um, but I also learned, you know, since January, that they have four grandchildren, all girls. And so uh, <laughs> Michael, was, my, Michael told me that, you know, Brenda reminds him that girl power rocks. But <laughs> as you can imagine, with four grandchildren, they are very busy loving on those kids. So. Um, it was such a blessing, but again, I, I thank you all for being here, um, and, and Michael, we look forward to hearing what the Lord has pressed on your heart to share this morning. This morning's scripture is found in the 10th chapter of Deuteronomy. Although heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord your God, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your ancestors alone and chose you, their descendants after them, out of all the peoples, as it is today. Circumcise then the foreskin of your heart and do not be stubborn any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone you shall worship, to him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in heaven. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Well, you know that Christian music can be both fun and meaningful. The choir's singing a new anthem this morning, and it's fun. And I know you're going to enjoy it, but I hope you're also encouraged by the message to lift your light.
puis c'est moi-même qui diac responsable ici. Hein. L'église ici, c'est l'église baptiste Sinaï. toujours là avec vous. Mais papa me vient âgé de 91 l'année, pas capable encore et moins de Kimbé. Ça ici ta gon amélioration de fait dans zone là, dans route yo. Parce que faut yo sous là pour descendre dans ville là. Des fois gagne qu'on même mourir dans route. Mais kounya là nous gagne une petite amélioration par rapport à la clinique qu'a fait chaque mois. Moi, j'ai rencontré M. Dieny à la fin 2011. Dieny m'a servi depuis l'année 2011 à nos jours. Tout a desservi avec M. Dieny. Et lui-même, chaque mois, régulièrement, l'appli vend, toujours monté pour venir à Mounio. Oui, par rapport à M. Dieny, il avait dit que tu es là, il m'a fait pour Mounio. J'espère que vous avez un par rapport à clinique là qui dans un an. Mais j'espère que c'est PAP. Bagayou ka vini. J'espère que vous avez un par rapport à la clinique. J'ai un bon dia fin intervention de beaucoup de gens. such a great day to be in the house of the Lord again and I just want to thank thank you all for being here as I prepare a word here that the Lord has been working on me for a while uh, but as I come before you today I want to thank God for another opportunity to serve him God is good to all of us his faithfulness his love his promise to us all God is good to us Despite our behavior, despite the choices that we make, some good, some bad, in this journey called life, God is good to us. Therefore, we must trust in God, acknowledge his goodness and kindness, give him all the glory and honor and praise in all things that we do. Would you pray with me now? Father God, we come before you today, Father God, thanking you for another day, Father God. Thanking you for this day that you have made, Lord. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this church. Bless the leaders of this church, Father God. Bring comfort to those that are shut in and sick, Father God. Father God, we ask that you touch the people of this church, Father God. Continue to be a blessing to them, Father God. Father God, I now ask that you touch, that my words touch someone, Father God. Just one little word, Father God, that reach out and touch someone, Father God. Father God, I ask that you touch the leaders of our community, Father God. Reach out and give them wisdom, Father God. Touch our nation, Father God. Bring healing to our nation, Father God. Bring unity to our nations, Father God. I ask that, Father God, that you also comfort the loved ones out in Pennsylvania, Father God, that have lost ones, Father God. Father God, be with them in this time, Father God. Be with this nation, Father God. Bring healing and peace to all of us, Father God. In that precious name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. I would like to thank Pastor Colvin for um, this opportunity to come to stand before you today. Um, I want to thank, thank him for his vision that he has for this church and allowing us young students, well, some of us ain't so young, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little elderly, to come before you from Baptist Seminary of Kentucky. Uh, great things is happening in this church. And I also want to thank the congregation 
you have saved me from writing a 10-page paper. Isn't God good? <laughs> and always, you never know when you're going to be blessed. But we know those blessings come from the Lord. He is just blessing me, and thank you. Thank you, Bobby. They know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Thank you for that assignment. <laughs> also for my wife, Brenda, uh, her continued support in what we do in ministry. We both are in school seeking degrees, and I tell you, uh, she has just been doing some great things uh, with me, maturing me, growing me, keeping me straight. We need that accountability partner, and she does a fantastic job. And to my friend Bobby, Bobby, thank you for them, 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 them words. I tell you what, uh, thank you. Uh, Bobby approached me in class. He said, uh, we're looking for a student from BSK to come and say a word. And I said, of course. You know, anytime the Lord says something to you, you just say, yes, Lord. And I said, immediately said yes. A few weeks later, we was at a conference. And the pastor uh, at our church in Hardin County, come out and visit us in Hardin County. And I had my name tag in. Pastor passed me in the hallway. He said, wait a minute. You're Michael Tinker? Uh, you're the one that's going to come down and preach? I said, yes. Uh, now, he threw me a curveball. He told me we would be talking about unity, but, you know, now we're talking about neighbor. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But it was great. I immediately said yes. And then they asked me to talk about uh, the partnerships that's going on right now. God is opening doors. He's opening doors between four people for Simmons College of Kentucky and Baptist Seminary of Kentucky has joined to form a team where doors are opening for people to have the opportunity to attend both institutions. Teamwork right here in our community. Let me quickly tell you my story. Uh, I'm a, I was at a minister conference. The president of the BSK was uh, talking about the school and how there would be a seminary at Simmons. Real down to earth guy. I didn't even know he was the president. But he was talking about a seminary right here in Louisville at Simmons College had two programs, uh, one with a degree and one for growth. Plus, it's affordable. It's affordable. That's the key thing. God has opened a door, and all you got to do is step through that door when he's opening. God wants you to step through, and sometimes it can be fearful. But I want to say that fear and faith can't exist in the same space. And so sometimes we may say, uh, I'm not sure, God. What do you want me to do? God, let me pray on it. Wait a minute. Who are you praying for? Newsflash, newsflash. Who are you praying for? So just step through that door. See, faith makes things possible. It says it's going to be easy. So step through that door. Let me get to the word today then. Um, it's, I'm going to come from Luke 25, 10, 25, and 37. I'm sure that you guys have been working on neighborly and things like that, and you probably, someone may have came from the scripture today. But uh, I'm going to read the New Living Translation for you today. On one, one day, an expert in religious law stood up and tested Jesus by saying, asking him this question, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. But the man wanted to be justified with his actions, so he answered Jesus, who is my neighbor? And this is when Jesus went into the sermon, the Good Samaritan. Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came alone, but when he saw the man laying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A Levite assistant walked over, looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side of the road. Then a good Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. 
going over to him, the Samaritan smoothed his wounds with olive oils and wine, bandaged him, and then put him on his donkey, own donkey, and took him to the inn, where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bills run higher, I'll pay you next time I'm here. Now, Jesus, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed the mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. You all have been doing a series on who is my neighbor. With that series in mind, I want you to consider it. Living it out takes teamwork. Living it out. How are we going to live this out? The Bible has many scriptures on neighbor. Depending on the version that you have, it's anywhere from 141 times 170 based on the translation. What I'm saying is that when a word is referenced in God's word, it is important to God and his plan for our life. Such as these two scriptures, Romans 15 and 2. Each of you should, should please our neighbor for good to build them up. Matthew 19 and 19. Honor your father and love your neighbor, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now let me get this straight. About, up front about living it out. Living it out. It's one thing to, to know and say that we love the Lord, God, and love our neighbor as ourself, but it is another thing to live it out. When it comes time to living it out, it gets tough. Case in point. My boss got on my last nerve. Can't stand him. Now that's not true. I have a wonderful boss. But my co-workers, in case, always say, want to be right about everything. You got one of those co-workers, want to be right about everything. You can't get a word in wise. I'm mad at the world. I don't feel like talking today. On the way to work, I'm running late. Somebody cut me off in a lane, and I start, comma this, comma that, comma that. Help me out, Holy Spirit. I just lost it. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. I need you, Jesus. Come on in and help me out right there because I need you. I lost it in that moment. So that happens. Now, you know it's Sunday morning. Teamwork on a Sunday morning. Um, your favorite football team may have played today or may be playing yesterday, and you're saying in your mind right now, don't take too long. Football starts at 1 o'clock. <laughs> I promise you I'll be done before that time. See, for those football teams to function, they must work together for a common goal. Uh, Sometimes the receiver goes out, the receiver broke the wrong way, the quarterback threw an interception, minor setback. Or those unsportsmanlike penalties that they get. A player lost his cool, lost his mind, but he's still playing, and they're still working together. Have you ever lost your mind, your cool in ministry? Christians don't do that. We don't lose our mind, do we? We don't get upset, do we? We don't lose our cool, right? But teamwork for the Lord begins with the individual. One of the most powerful experiences in, in life is being a follower of Jesus. And embracing God's plan, his teamwork, it begins and stretches all across culture and this nation. See, sometimes we don't fully understand how great and immense of it, how God uses us in this world. You are part of a team, a big team. It doesn't matter what your role is. It doesn't matter uh, how you, important you are. God is the driver. That's the whole point. One part is not more important than the, more important than the others. No person is more important than the others. The whole team is important. God is above all. Teamwork. See, we all are part of God's team, which he has a plan and a purpose for our lives and a destination. And part of that plan and purpose is being a good neighbor.
to the people we encounter daily in our lives. I need you to consider that. I need you to consider that. But sometimes we don't get it right. We fail the team, God's team. But all oh, by his grace and mercy, we get another opportunity to be a neighbor and get another chance. I'm sure you're familiar with the passage uh, uh, of what I was reading, the passage where uh, the religious lawyer wants to test Jesus. See, what, what should I do? Uh, he says, uh, to have internal, internal life. Jesus just referred him back to, to the law. See, when Jesus had the religious lawyer answer the question, he said uh, he, he wanted to justify that. But the real question that he wanted to ask was, who is the neighbor? And this is where Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know the story as I, as I was reading it. He was traveling, the man, the, the man was traveling down, down from Jericho to Jerusalem. He was beat up and left for dead. A priest came by, crossed to the side of the road, stopped right there. This is the priest, one of God's team members, one of the team members of God's team. He left the man for dead, but what would you do today? Now, whom? Hmm, we know that uh, Jewish customs at that time may have been that priests are not to touch the dead. But what would we do today? Would we say, no, I don't want to get involved. The police are going to ask me too many questions. The hospital is going to ask me too many questions. I'm late for church, the priest may have said. I'm busy, late for work. Someone else will help. In the military, you hear a lot of terms about the effective range of vehicles, tanks, planes, things of that nature, saying how far they can go, how far a plane will go before it gets, gets, gets um, get refueled, things of that nature, effective range. Uh, even that new plane, the Boeing 787, will travel 17 hours from Newark, Jersey to Sydney. That's some range. But the effective range of an excuse is zero. <laughs> it's zero. That priest gave, we may give a lot of excuses, but it's zero. Zero. Hurt the team. The priest hurt the team when it didn't help. There was a second person that let the team down. A Levite. Also observed the man. But he walked over, looked at him. Hmm. But he passed them by. Today, when we say, well, at least I checked on my neighbor. Didn't look bad to me. I took a photo on my cell phone. I'm, I'm going to post it online. The Levi failed the team. He failed the team. Maybe they both failed the team because they was afraid of being attacked by the same robbers as they was going along the way. Uh, I believe you may know this quote. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That was uh, FDR. You guys remember Franklin Delano Roosevelt, right? So I, I know some of, some of the folks my age, we, we know that, right? Maybe the youngsters don't know, but we know that. But see, we got something more powerful than those words by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We got a word that's more powerful. Yea, do I walk through the valley of death shadow of the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and staff that comforts me. There's no need to fear. There's no need to fear. But perhaps they just didn't want to be bothered with helping a man, a possible neighbor. They failed the team. Now the question becomes, again, what must I do to live this out? What must I do to consider this man a neighbor? I'm glad you asked. Verse 27 holds all the key to living this out. You have been given internal life. It is by the grace through a faith that works in love. The answer is in Luke. Involves a faith consistent of the love for God and the love for one's neighbor. It is inconceivable to love God 
without faith. Without faith. 27 says, the man answered, you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. We got to live it out. We got to live it out. In this verse, it says, first point, I'm going to make a few more points, and, and uh, I won't be here much long. You must love the Lord. Love him unconditionally. Not that type of love that say, well, Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. That's conditional love. What if the Lord had that kind of love for us, that conditional love? We would be done. We would be done. We must love the Lord, Lord, without hesitation. We must let the love of Jesus Christ shine through. Isn't that what the choir just sung about? Let that love shine through on any cloudy day of our lives. Good days, bad days, let that love shine through. That love that is never ending, that love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, that type of love we must have for the Lord, live it out, live it out. And there was another thing he said. Also, in that scripture says, your God. Notice, he didn't say our God. He said, your God. When it says your God, he's making it personal. A personal relationship between you and God. God wants that personal relationship between you and him. That quiet time, that type of relationship that only you can have in the early morning with him. Or a crisis in the midnight hour, or a crisis at 4 o'clock in the evening when you're at work and another co-worker got on your nerve, which it does happen. And you said, Holy Spirit, come in, help me. Jesus, help me. He's my God. I want you to have that relationship with him and that personal relationship with your God, my God, and my God alone because we got to live it out, live it out. Also said in there, said, with all your heart, love him with all your heart. My, my scripture that I will, I will take, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It's when we lean on our own understanding, it's when we lose it. We start trying to do it our way and not his way. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart, doing it his way, not in our way, but his way. Live it out, live it out, live it out. And then he said, love with all your soul, your soul, your soul. Jesus said, what good would it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit your soul? Don't forfeit your soul. Don't exchange your soul for the things of the world. Let the love of Jesus Christ again shine through. Thank you, choir. Y'all just was, was helping me when you were singing. I mean, the Lord, see how he does? They're singing, let the love shine through, and they were shining. Let it shine through. Serving your neighbor and loving him heart and soul. Live it out. Live it out. And then he said, listen, love with all your strength, all your strength. It comes from the Lord. I am so thankful and grateful using my strength to serve him with every fiber of my body. That's what he wants you to do. See, your strength comes from, strength is because of him. His strength did five things for you and me today. He woke me up. 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 Is that six? It's still six. His strength woke me up this morning. His strength, not my strength. It was his strength. God deserves all the honor and glory for waking us up this morning. Live it out, live it out, live it out. Then he said, love him with all your mind in verse 27. And I got to go to Romans 2. And do not, Romans 12 and 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that it's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't let the world tell you who is your neighbor based on where they're from, the color of the skin, the education level, how much money is in their bank account, how many followers they have on Twitters, or how many Facebook friends they got in their head likes. <laughs> Don't let the world tell you. The mind is changed by prayer and by reading and reflecting on God's word by worship and meditation, 
on God's act. Jesus and the Holy Spirit works with us, will lead us to the spiritual and moral growth of Christians. Teamwork, teamwork, live it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A main part of living it out, I believe, is the saving grace that God gives to those who put their trust in him. You and I may have been that priest that walked by a neighbor one day, but by his grace and the goodness of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed. We have been redeemed. Jesus is our deliverer. He will turn the situation around. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the light. There's that light again. There's that light again. He is the light. Let it shine. I'm so grateful. I could have been down and out. But Jesus died for you and me. He did it for us. He didn't have to do it. Saved by the blood that still works today. The power of that blood still works today. The power of Jesus Christ. The power, his love, his agape love. That beacon of light that shines, lights up the world. Go ahead, choir. Give me that. Lights up the world. The power, that healing power. Healing power that the world needs today. The world salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, the lawyer understood when Jesus asked him who was his neighbor. And it was the one who, and he said it was the one that showed the mercy, the good Samaritan, that didn't walk past him. Then Jesus said, you now go and do the same. He knew. He told him to go and do the same. Our Lord Savior, when and where, he knew when and where we was going to fail the test. We were going to fail that test of not being a good neighbor. But by his grace and mercy, he has given us another opportunity and another chance to be a good neighbor. That priest and that Levite, he gave them an opportunity to continue to serve the kingdom. Jesus said a new commandment, I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you so that you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciple if you love one another. He's given us an opportunity. Jesus did not want to leave no person behind. Therefore, we must speak life to each other. We want to encourage each other. Encourage your brother and sister. Leave no one behind. Walk with each other. Pray with each other. Be good to neighbor, to all neighbors. We can't afford to leave any member behind in today's world. Teamwork, living it out. There is still work we must do for the Lord, for every member of God's team. Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. And as I close out, I want to share a couple of pictures with you. Um, my train, my train, my train, my train, my train. Thank you, thank you. I walk a lot in E-Town. Me and my wife walk a lot. She walks more than me. She's a little bit younger than me, and she's, <laughs> she, she leaves me sometimes, but she don't leave me too far behind. But uh, we do walk a lot. I'm still trying to work off some of these pounds. I'm just going to say it ain't easy. But uh, we, have some, we have some train tracks out there. I believe there's CST train. And sometimes I must wait for the train. So as I was waiting, the train was go by. There's always three engines that are used to pull the train uphill out of the valley. They need the power of those three engines to pull it out. And they also... When they're going down in the valley, they need the power of those three engines to keep that train under control so that it won't be a train wreck going down the hill. The power of those three engines and working together to carry that train where it needs to go. Also, this train has many cars. All of these cars are different. They have a different purpose and destination. They have a different function. But they are moving in the same direction towards the same destination that they're going. That teamwork we see, we need. The Father, the Spirit, the Son, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That engine carrying that train, we need that same power or we will lose it and be a train wreck without it if we don't have it. All but... With that, we are headed to a purpose that God has for us, a plan, and a destination of life. No matter where we are in this car, no matter where we are, we're all not the same, but we're headed in that same direction, and we need each other. 
We all are part of God's team moving in the direction that he has set forth for us all, and it takes teamwork. Now, as you've been speaking of a neighbor, I'm going to uh, have one more thing about a neighbor that I want to leave a quote from Martin Luther King. Of most persistent, urgent questions, what are you doing for others? If you can help someone along the way, what are you doing for the youth in schools? Are you mentoring them? Teaching them how to read. Men, are you in vacation Bible study? What are you doing for the homeless in your community? Are you feeding them? Are you sheltering them? This is what Jesus would want us to do for neighbors. What are you doing for the senior citizen in your community? Are you spending time with them? Are you talking to them? Just going by seeing how they're doing. Neighbor. What are you doing for someone that is entirely different from you? And I'm going to leave you with a story here on this next photo here. Quick story about a farmer and a young black man. Young black man, 19 years old, and an elderly farmer. About as different as two people can be. The young man was traveling in 1972, upstate Indiana, had a blowout late at one night. There was no other cars on the road. Dark road, nothing out there on the highway, Highway 30 up in Indiana, if you ever been up that way. There was no cell phones back in 1972. <laughs> couldn't, could, could, couldn't, my cell phone in my bag, couldn't pick up my cell phone. Could, could, you, you, can't, you had no cell phone. But it was dark. So the young man saw a house, and he had to walk about a half a mile to the house. Can you imagine what was going through that young man's mind, the young black man's mind? He's going to a dark house in the middle of nowhere. But he needed help. He knocked on the door. The farmer came out in his long johns. You know the type that had a little thing in the back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You've seen them before, right? <laughs> and the farmer said, uh, uh, um, the elderly gentleman said, asked him, my son, how can I help you? The young man told the farmer that he had a flat and he couldn't fix it. The farmer said, hold on, let me get dressed. The farmer took the young black man back to his car, literally jacked up his car, fixed the tire, and then the young man offered him $20 for his help. Hey, $20 back in 1972 went a long way. But the farmer said, no, just help someone else out in your life. This encounter changed the young man's life. He knew something had happened that night. He didn't quite know what. But he knew he was different because of it, of the encounter with the farmer. See, what the young man didn't know at that time, that Jesus had placed a neighbor in his life. The farmer showed the love of Jesus Christ to someone who was entirely different. Entirely different. This was 46 years ago. But I still remember it as if it was yesterday. This farmer started a change in my life. Jesus said... Yes, now you go and do the same. This farmer, my neighbor, didn't question it. He just did what Jesus said. I will never forget that farmer. That farmer did something in my life at that time, and I was so grateful for him. We've got to help someone as a neighbor. You may never know how it is going to affect that person's life, but trust me, it will have a long-lasting effect on that person's life. Living it out takes teamwork. All of us working together and encouraging each other, being a part of God's team. Now, you know, Pastor, I know that they said, you know, 101 uh, uh, Harmonutic said, don't start another sermon in another sermon. That really is it of my sermon, but I could not leave without going here, Pastor what you guys are doing. This stuff is so powerful that you can't plan this. God has a plan that just happens, and, and, and we just got to ride it. I was reading the word of uh, Jesus for men when, when uh, the pastor switched up on me. I thought we was be doing, we were doing unity. But I said, let me just look and start doing some research. And as I was going through this book, 365 days in this book, Jesus re reading the word, word of Jesus for men. 365 days. 
This was published in 2015. 2015. But God had a plan that didn't know anything about. But he, he knew. The day is October 28th, October 28th. And the scripture and the words that he has for October 28th, I've got to read this scripture. It comes from Matthew 25, 35, and 36. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Congregation, this is October 28th. And this is what is in here for us. If this is not saying be neighborly, and this is what is about being a neighbor, hey, we didn't lost it. But through Jesus Christ, through the Father, through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, we're going to be neighbors to each and every one of us and to someone that's different. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Pastor Mike has talked about a team, and today, on behalf of Christ, this church invites you to join Jesus' team by professing your faith in Christ, to say, from this point in my life, I'm a follower of Jesus. And then we invite you to unite with this church. You know who we are. You know what we stand for. You know where we've been and where we're headed. We invite you to unite with the church. We're going to stand and sing an invitation hymn. And as we do, I'll be here to receive you as you make public a decision that Christ has put into your heart. Let's stand together.